In this video, you will learn how to create interactive components like a pro. Make sure you stay till the end to see how we can nest these interactive components and create even more realistic prototypes. Now, let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the tutorial, I just want to suggest two videos for you to watch. First, my video on Smart Anime, because we'll be using Smart Anime in this tutorial. Also, my video on component properties will be very helpful for this video. So go check those out and then come back to this video. Yeah, now let's get started. So first of all, why do we use interactive components? And the argument is pretty simple. You'll be able to go from something like this to something like this. So from this hot mess of, I don't know how many artboards or frames, for blah, 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 like 16, 24, bunch of frames to just one frame. And then what you can do is you create things like buttons, accordions, dropdowns, whatever you want in the form of an interactive component. Once you've created them in one page, you can take those components. So regardless if it's your buttons or tabs or whatever it is, you can take those and then reuse them all over. So you can reuse them in your file, in different pages, even within different files, you can search in your assets panel and find the button or the accordion or the dropdown, whatever it is, take it, drag it onto the canvas and start making your magic. First of all, let's start by creating a button. I'll create a button, call it button. I'll add an auto layout to it. And by the way, if you want to know how to use auto layouts, I have a video on that as well. I'll add a fill color, maybe something like that. Give it some rounding, even give it a stroke. Maybe something like this. All right, so we have a button, I'll call it button. And for the sake of having this tutorial short and sweet, I will just have two different states for this button. So we have the default state. So that's what it looks like when it's just in its original state. And then we have the hover state, which is just gonna be maybe an opacity. So I'll take these two, I'll create a component set. And I don't create a component out of these because if I do that, and then I go to my assets panel and I search for component because it's called that right now, I will get both of these when I drag it out. We want just one instance, right? So we're not gonna have this be one single component. We're gonna have it be a component set. Right now we have the two different states, but we want interactivity. When we hover this, it should become this. So I'll go here, I'll add an interaction while hovering, change to property default. So now both of them are called default. So let's change that, it's gonna be state. This one is default and this one is hover. So now if we look at the interaction again, it says while hovering, change to state hover. And we have smart animate, 150 milliseconds. Sounds good. And then while we're not hovering it, we're gonna go back to this. So not on click, on mouse leave, we're gonna go back to default, smart animate, 150 milliseconds. Let's try it out, drag it out, the component. I could also go up here, I'll search for button, drag it out here, I'll add a frame, and maybe we'll add a fill color to that frame, and we'll add a prototype, flow starting point, click play, Zoom in a bit, hover, and it works. Awesome. So this is our first interactive component. Now we're gonna create a tab item component. So once again, I'll add a text saying tab, and then we'll have some sort of a underline. I'll add an auto layout, call it tab, set this to fill container, and this to white. So we're gonna have one state where it's hover and one state where it's default, obviously, and one state where it's active. So actually this is the active state, but we can duplicate this three times, create a component set once again. So this will be the default state, right? So state default, and we have state hover and state inactive. So the first state default, I don't want this to be visible. So I'll set that to zero opacity. And I want this to be maybe a bit faded out. And then we have the hover state, which is gonna be, we see this underline, but it's not as evident as the active state. And this is also still gonna be faded out. And then we have the active state that looks 
correct. All right, so let's add some interactivity to it again. So when we hover it, I want it to go to this on or while hovering, change to hover, smart animate. Then on click, I want it to go, oh, sorry, this should be called active and this should be inactive. So inactive, hover, and active. Let's go back to the prototyping settings. So while hovering, change to hover for this one. And here on click, change to active smart anime. That looks about right. So if we drag this out here, we can go to the assets again. What is it called? It is called tab. Search for it, drag it out, and we'll add it to a frame. Give it a full starting point, play it. All right, so when we hover it, we get that thing. When we click it, it's active. So that works, awesome. This by itself will not be enough for the example that I wanna make here. I want to be able to click one of these tabs, and when I click that tab, I want all other tabs to become inactive. So how do we do that? I'll actually take this tab component, but we can go to the assets tab or assets panel. I'll drag it out. I'll duplicate this component three times. I'll add an auto layout to this and we'll call it tabs, in plural. This will be tab one, this will be tab two, and this will be tab three. I want one of these to be active and the other ones should be inactive. When we click this tab two, this should be inactive. When we click tab three, both of these should be inactive. So I need to create a flow for that. So what I'll do is I'll create a component out of this. And in this component, I will add some variants. So let's add a variant in here. We have the variant where tab two is active. Then tab one is inactive. We'll also have the variant where tab three is active and all of the others are inactive. So when we click tab two, prototype, on click on this one, I want it to go to this variant. So on click, change to variant two. And to make it a bit simpler to read this stuff, let's say state, or not state maybe, let's say variant, and this is gonna be tab one, tab two, tab three. Once again, when we click tab two, it's gonna go to this one. When we click tab three, it's gonna go to tab three. Tab two from this one is gonna take us back to tab two. Tab one from this one is gonna take us back to tab one. Tab three from the first one, you get it. So we need to reconnect all of these so that makes sense and that it works. Now if we go to assets, search for tabs, find the tabs one, create a frame, give it a color, play the flow, we can see that it works which is pretty amazing. Now let's go into our explorations file here, which is a different page and actually use it in practice. So we search for tabs, we'll drag that in here and I'll search for button, we'll drag that in here, place it outside here. Let's take this frame, let's add a flow starting point, let's play it and just see how it works. Like magic, I am just astonished. Like I mentioned before, you can check out my videos on Smart Animate and component properties over here. If you want to help out, subscribing, commenting, liking, hitting the bell notification button, all of these things really help, guys. Now, until the next one, have a great freaking life, and we'll talk soon. Ciao.